Our scripture lesson this morning is from the book of John, chapter 14, 15 to 21. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is a spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live. You also will live. On that day, you will know that I am my father and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Last Sunday, I spent a lot of time talking about the word if. If you love me, then. And honestly, the whole time I was preaching, I'm like, something's not right here. And then I realized this week, because I was preaching on this text, not the one we had last week. So, so you've all heard it. If you were here last week, amen. No. <laughs> but within this text, there's another small word, like the word if, that I think gets overlooked. And that's the word in. I will dwell you in you and you in me. So often we think about Jesus and journeying with Jesus. We think about walking alongside Jesus or Jesus walking alongside us. But here in John's gospel, God is talking to us, John is talking to us about Jesus dwelling in us, not just beside us. We think about following Jesus, being behind Jesus. We think about journeying with Jesus alongside Jesus. But do we think about journeying with Jesus within us? And that's where the if you love me comes in. Because it's not just a love that is external and like you're over there and I'm over here, but it's a love that's very much internal, that Jesus is within us. We talk a lot about how when we see other people, we should see the face of God. We were created in God's image, male and female, we were created in God's image. So that whenever I look at one of you, I should indeed see the image of God. And hopefully, if you look at me, you might see the image of God. But what if we are more intentional about looking in the mirror and seeing the image of God because of our faith and our understanding of who Jesus is in our lives, that they dwell within us? that Jesus is a part of us. This whole discourse in John is Jesus' final discourse. He's getting ready to be crucified and, and move on. And he's trying to prepare his disciples to carry on the mission and the ministry. And they still have a lot of questions, and he knows they have a lot of questions. And sometimes we see that frustration in Jesus because of all their questions. Like, really? We've been doing this how many years, and you still don't get it? I'm like, Jesus, you've had three years. I've had like 30 and they still don't get it. Give me a break. But he's trying to also give them comfort. This is often a text that many people will pick for a memorial service because it is a message of comfort. I will send another advocate or paraclete to journey with you. There's someone else. I'm not the end. There's more to come. We believe in the second chapter. 
It's not just about this chapter we're experiencing right now. There is hope. Yeah, there's a lot in front of us that we're going to have to put up with, but there is hope beyond that, and I'm going to go ahead and prepare this place for you, and you will always have a place in my presence, and I hope to always have a place in you. I mean, although these words are there, they're not the only words that are there. Believe in me, believe also in my Father, but also allow me to dwell within you is what Jesus is saying. Allow me to be a part of you. And then all that he says in this particular portion of Scripture really makes a lot of sense. If we allow Jesus to dwell within us, then indeed we are never alone. No matter what life throws at us, no matter where we are on this journey, no matter how distraught we might be, how frustrated we might be, how angry we might be, if we embody the Spirit, then we know we're not going through any of that alone. I know. There are those times where we feel like we're doing it alone. There's nobody doing it with us. Life can be lonely sometimes. Perhaps, perhaps those are the times when we forget who we are and whose we are. Perhaps those are the times when we get so self-absorbed in what's going on with us that we forget to look to who created us and who dwells within us. And you know, when we free ourselves up from that, we don't put the burden all on our shoulders, when we allow the Spirit to completely dwell within us, all of a sudden we can breathe better. What is that word for spirit in Hebrew? Ruach, breath. When the Spirit dwells within us, we have breath. We can breathe. And even on our worst days, on our most lonely days, if we just try to take in that breath and understand that that breath isn't just air, but it's the Spirit of God coming within us, then we know we have presence. We know we have a companion, an advocate, an advocate, one who's on our side, who wants to hear our side of the story, wants to be there to be with us, to advocate for us. And with that in perspective, doesn't that open us up to be more available for others who may need an advocate in this journey of life? Because we know we're taken care of. We have the spirit dwelling within us and now all of a sudden we are free. Free to be God's hands and legs and voice on this journey of life. This really is a message of hope that Jesus is giving to those disciples long ago and to us today. I've gone before you. I've prepared the place for you. If you just believe, I will dwell within you and you will have the power to do what I call you to do. So breathe. Breathe in the Spirit of God. Breathe out all the worries and complaints. And maybe sometimes breathe out the Spirit of God onto others. Breathe and allow the Spirit to dwell within you. Amen.